clear the clear the um, the whole idea behind Gothic, because people just think it started in 1976, and the whole concept of Gothic is a is a far-reaching thing. It goes back to medieval times. And we just want to sort of enlighten people a bit and sort of have you know explain it to them in ordinary terms and get them interested in it, because there's a lot more to it than just like back home in your hair. There's a whole art and literature and everything, you know, and a lot of people just miss that point totally. I mean, there's a definite market of the Carol's um, clothing. I mean, most people would call it gothic. Basically, I think you know, she's trying to capture that sort of, you know, medieval pagan feel you know, and um, put it into her clothes. Um, I mean, a lot of people call it psychedelic, but it goes beyond that, really. I think it's sort of capturing that sort of mystical quality. The strong colours, like obviously red and black, predominate. I mean, particularly associated with the occult, let's say, you know, the sort of strong colours. But I mean, um, purple, greens, very popular, obviously the 60s connotations. I think there's a sort of um, similarity between the 60s and sort of, you know, like the 14th, 15th century, that whole, you know, sort of flamboyance. For instance, in London, you know, you must really aware there's been a sort of acid house craze. And um, it's sort of tied in with that. We've had a lot of those sort of people coming in because they like certain styles and designs, which is quite, a, you know, it's surprising in a way, but once again, it's that 60s thing that the acid house thing was drawing on. It's, it's strange to notice that some of the bigger high street chain stores this summer have really, um, well, last summer and, and the coming spring, they've got a lot of, uh, you know, these kind of designs in there. And they will rename, you know, name, unmention the names. But I mean, they've, it's obvious their designers have been around places like this, seen Carol's designs, and copied them, you know, and stuck them in the shops, made a lot of money. Okay, the, the designs, that, you know, Carol uses are sort of to, can be used by anybody. But I mean, she's been doing it for a few years now, and, and once again, it's just high fashion decides. Let's take a street fashion and manipulate it, you know, for big money. They called you the witch of the south? It's like a nickname somebody just because of why I used to have lots of crystal balls and things. Well, I have got crystal balls down there. Well, I'm not into witchcraft, but I'm into walking around the graveyards at night and frightening a few people, yes. Ah! How well, yes, and, and the early uh, 50s, you know, uh, uh, well, even earlier, 30s for films of, uh, of the, the old black and white classics, you know, Hunchback and Ultra Drum and uh, Frankenstein, the Draculas and Hound of the Baskerville, blood and guts and gore and, and all this. And keeping the image going is, is, is just the way uh, that I've always felt and lived. If you mix all this together and, and throw a bit of rock and roll into it, then you've got some exciting music. I found, now I'm coming up to 30 years in horror rock and roll, and I found that it's evergreen, that like, I've seen all these trends come and go. It's about goth gothic music. Vampires, that sort of thing. Is that where you get your images from? Yeah. Out, out of, you know, uh, horror films, that sort of... We like to portray that sort of uh, image. That's what we're like. Are you playing that band? Yeah, we are. We are out of Nosferatu. I'm a guitarist, and this is the bass player. Oh, oh.